Drone soccer is the world's newest esport and it is full contact. It's played with quadcopter drones in a protective plastic cage designed to collide with the other team. Two teams of uh, three on three or up to five on five go head to head uh, in what looks a lot like Quidditch. Let the match begin! One drone's trying to score through the other team's goal, and everybody else is trying to block them out of the air. This last year, I got introduced to drone soccer. And they go, well, you're going to teach drone soccer. And I said, OK, I don't know what drone soccer is, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Fortunately, I had a crew of kids that were absolutely outstanding, and they got into it. We were showed that we can be part of this drone soccer team. and really exciting and really nerve-wracking at the same time since like they haven't done it before. Let's go, let's go. It's only getting bigger and there's a lot of new beginners and there's a lot of help out there for people that are beginning. As much time or even more time than you spend practicing or playing is also time spent building and knowing and programming your drone to be perfect to yourself. We're doing this. We are playing the first championship and it was the greatest feeling in the world. One, two, three, wings! I'm David Roberts, and I'm one of the founders of Drone Soccer. We're bringing Drone Soccer to the United States. We saw this as a real big sport in South Korea. Um, it's spreading across Europe. We set out thinking we just needed to start with a drone soccer ball, and it turns out that it's more than just the ball. It's the education piece that goes underneath it. They had a basic understanding of flight controllers and motors and speed controls and prop directions and algorithms for controlling them. Being a competitive pilot, I wanted them to fly competitively. We started getting things to where they were flying exactly the way we wanted them to fly, where I knew they'd be in a good competitive state. It's a game that seems simple on the outside, but it's really complex when you actually start diving into it. They're trying to score points on a goal like is just behind me. Entails a, a, a lot of different skills. Uh, there's soldering, there's electronics, there's uh, computers, uh, there's aerodynamics, even aircraft design. We had three weeks to build the drones. From scratch, we got the kits and then just set them together. We put on the propellers, we put on the cages. It was just plugged together. The only thing that we didn't build from scratch was obviously the motherboard because we're not that good at welding. <laughs> but we had to learn how to connect radios to transmitters and receivers. We had to learn how to fix the drones in case they broke. Then I trained the kids how to create checklists so that when they get ready to go to an event, they're not missing propellers or batteries or transmitters or anything like that. So we would literally practice. Some guys want to be mechanics, some guys want to be pilots. Mechanics, we have them taking props off and putting them on, cutting the cages open, doing repairs. A lot of concentration and speed. You got to fix it, and then you got to fly it again. So you'd go in and fix it really fast, time ourselves to see how long it takes to just fix a prop. And then you bring it back in and we fly it again. I learned how to build and repair a drone quickly because you only have a few minutes outside the ring to repair it before you have to get it inside the ring or you're not flying. And finally, when we'd come in here, we do, in, in this room that we're in now, we actually started drilling. And I, I was hard, I was like a drill sergeant on them in here. And that I said, you're gonna fly as many times through these hoops as you can and you're gonna try and knock him out of the sky. We just turned this into our practice room and Mr. F challenged us to kill every battery. It was fun because we got to send back feedback to the supplier, U.S. Drone Soccer, and then they would send it back to their supplier to have modifications made. We found out that certain protectors work better than others and things like that. With coding, uh, just in general, it, it's what makes the drone fly. But Ian did all the programming. Every drone that I'm aware of has a flight controller, it has a gyroscope and the accelerometer to know what the angle is and how fast it's accelerating and all that. And uh, that goes to a speed controller, which controls each of the motors and their direction, their speed. So all the coding is done on the flight controller. It changes how it sees the inputs from the gyroscope. So, you know, if it sees 
it a little bit off, it'll adjust a little bit. If it's a lot off, it's gonna adjust faster. So all of that is part of the flight controller and its gyroscopes and stuff. Oh, we did wipe the code, so <laughs> they ain't getting our code. The, the drone soccer tournament was the first high school American tournament. For the competition wise, we had never been up to the arena, the practice there, so we had no idea what it was like. <laughs> it was kind of overwhelming at first. You know, it was at Exploration of Flight and I walk into this big hangar, there's opposing teams, there is some of the best pilots in the world are there watching us fly. Once we got in and once I got in and started actually working on the drone, that's when we all kind of fell into our areas and calmed down. We, our mechanics started just working on the small parts of our drone. Programmer did a little bit more programming. The flyers did just a little bit more flying just to test out the drones. And we got all prepared and we calmed down. And then once we started our first game, that's when it really hit. Uh, this is our first year offering aerospace and uh, we decided to be a part of the drone soccer um, competition here today. So they're prototype drones and uh, the students learned how to build them first. Um, they learned how to program them using Betaflight and kind of tune them so that they're uh, successfully flying in the arena. Drone soccer is like an eSport in real life. You've got uh, actual physical drones but you're not in any physical danger yourself where uh, all of the drones are enclosed in this, uh, this arena and um, there's very little chance of the, the pilots getting in trouble. Maybe the referees. I, I <laughs> we, you know, we write the drones and we'll uh, score points and you know, we'll assist the, uh, the pilots with, with their flights. So Colorado is host to the first academic leagues in the country. We had our first tournament recently with four local high school programs. It was a very exciting event. We went over to the Wings tournament and uh, we were blessed with the first place. And it was really uh, entertaining and fun. Some of these kids have never been in competition before. They created that teamwork spirit and that atmosphere. Every, they were representing Wings when they went over there. To pull it off in a very short time like that, I couldn't be more proud of them. I mean, it's just, I get a little choked up even talking about it. We want to congratulate you for winning the first Wings Over the Rocky Blue Sky Invitational, first place, the first ever drum soccer match in the United States of America. Congratulations. That first academic tournament really demonstrated what this sport is. Students are totally engaged in learning strategy, but also repairing their drones in the middle of a match. I want to know what you got out of it. What are you going to take away that you can apply towards your life when you get out of here from this class and from drone soccer? What I really got from the, from the tournament was lots of memories and unique experiences that are only going to happen like once in my life. So you've got four years of experience now working on drones, and you're gonna you're, you're gonna get your 107 possibly. What'd you learn from this class? To feel like being part of a team a bunch, with a bunch of dudes yeah. and hear the crazy conversations I hear, <laughs> and everybody working together to accomplish one goal, uh -huh. and everybody training together and putting their time in that work. You got it. You got it. Recover. Yeah. I learned leadership and. Namely responsibility, because I had to take all the stuff home and make sure it was all ready for the tournament. It's difficult to stay focused on what you're doing and then have to look at what everybody else is doing and then know that when you go in there to compete that you've got to transition to, okay, flying. And then once you get done flying, then you got to go back to team management stuff, right? So this is a sport, but most importantly, it's an educational tool. It's an immersion in aerospace engineering and aviation, and these students don't realize how much they're learning. Drones were a hobby 10 years ago, uh, but now they're an explosive consumer and industry market, a billion dollars at least, and they're finding applications in every industry. Right now we're in the testing phase for a lot of things. like. This is where, with spaceflight, Yuri Gagarin uh, first made it to space. We were finally starting to see some of the bigger benefits of this. 
Jeff Bezos is uh, currently working with the FAA to make um, drones that are slightly autonomous but still manned from a remote location. I feel like it's going to be everywhere. Fire departments are using them, police departments. I see it getting a lot bigger. It'll get like more kids to get involved with aviation and drones. Most of my friends at school, they don't care for that stuff. So I try to get them involved with stuff like drones. My long-term goal is to be an astronaut. I'm currently working on ground school and I'm actually about to take a big test today. I kind of want to be an aerospace engineer and design stuff for spaceships. My hopes and dreams for the future are to keep flying. They walked out of here with uh, learning how to do teamwork. They walked out of here with learning how to work on drones. Uh, they learned how to build remote control airplanes. And uh, they learned about the spirit of cooperation. Are you going to create your own business? If you are, let's talk about a business plan. Do you want to go into uh, photography, like for weddings? Do you want to go into real estate? Do you want to go into uh, working for public service? These are things they can all do now because before it was like a dream, but now it's a reality. The sky is the limit.